Alright, hello all, and welcome to, um, not really an election night. We're covering four local races, as you see, Missouri uh, State House Districts 39, 97, 129, 144. Uh, no one's watching right now, so I'm going to get some stuff set up. Uh, if you'll just give me a second. Oh, hello there. We do have someone watching. Uh, for whatever reason, my thing's pretty messed up. My, uh, view count viewer counter. Right now, it's pretty, uh, messed up. Uh, I'm dealing with some techie stuff right now. Because we're, um, redoing the way we call elections and stuff. Oh, we're gonna have Missouri elections tonight. Uh, local elections. Uh, I think you guys got a bit of spoilers here, but you don't know what side the candidate's on. Unless you're an expert on Missouri local races for whatever strange reason. I mean, other than that, uh, we don't have much going on. On the 12th, we have a couple more. And the 13th, we have a few more state house races. Uh, if you saw my last video, uh, you saw how I redid the election process. Uh, the calling process, rather, not the election process. I don't control that. Also, for all the people from Irvington here, I figured something out. Brian Smith did not get 100% of the vote. There were 11 write-ins, causing him to get 1% to get 99% to 1% for write-ins. So now that we've got that all done with, polls close in about 29 minutes. So, oh, bye. Anyway, so, uh, right now, we're going to do a bit of review to win house. We're going to pull up the house map. I'm sorry I didn't have this out already. Uh, and I'm going to show you basically what's going on. Once this loads, um, so we're going to first point out in the state of Maine, look here, the second district, Trump won it by about 10 percentage points. It's been moved from lean Republican to actually tilt Republican, but they don't have that option here. I'm going to see if I can close this irritating ad. Great. Stop seeing this ad. Not interested. Awesome. Uh, this was moved to tilt Republican, but they don't give us that option here. Uh, this is tilt Republican. We moved it from lean. This was moved to tilt Democrat from toss-up. This is probably going to be moved to safe Democrat. Uh, before long. This was moved from likely Democrat to safe Democrat. Um, Indiana, that district right there, ninth district, uh, found a competitive race there, but we don't know what to expect. It's only one poll that's out from that district, so we've changed it to likely Republican. Uh, no other race changes, I believe. Oh, and South Carolina District 4, we moved from safe Republican to likely Republican. We could be moving this district to safe Democrat. Uh, oh, we also moved a um, couple districts in New York. One from likely Democrat to safe Democrat. One from safe Republican to likely Republican. And then we have, um, we're probably going to see this rating changing to safe because we found a new poll at Ann Custer up by 30 percentage points. Uh... Yeah, so right now, Timothy Waltz looks like the most vulnerable uh, Democrat in the whole mix. See, right there. Oh, no, sorry, that's N Rick Nolan. That's Timothy Waltz. Uh, his district was won by Trump by about 14 percentage points. He won by less than one. Uh, now that they lost the incumbent advantage, that's going to be a pretty uh, interesting, you know, a... Pretty, pretty interesting race to see. Did I just see Julian Castro there? No, that's his, um, one of his relatives. Never mind. But, uh, you see in the south, most of the districts are safe, with a uh, few exceptions. Kentucky 06, South Carolina 05. If you, uh, count Virginia as, the Virginia is in the south, those two districts aren't safe. And if you count Florida, there's a few competitive districts there. Uh, and then when we go into the Great Plains, uh,
basically you see the same thing. A few competitive districts here, there. Uh, Nebraska, too, is going to be an interesting one. It voted for Trump by about two points, I think. Uh, and then Don Bacon. I'm not sure if he's running for re-election or not, but he's not, like, loved. Uh, he barely won in a Republican midterm year. And he's a Republican, so. Uh, Montana Congressional District. Uh, at large, I, I'm just going to explain that in case you missed it. There was a special election there. The Democrat um, almost won. They just missed out by five percentage points. That was because a lot of people voted early, uh, because um, after voting, early voting started, and most people voted before this. Greg Gianforte he uh, physically assaulted a reporter, so that could hurt him. I mean, and then there's uh, what's your face, Karen Handel in Georgia District Six. Uh, she's gonna have an exciting re-election, partly because she's not particularly well liked, and if John Ossoff runs again for some reason. Uh, the terms are much better for the Democrats now, and that district's only getting bluer every day. So, we don't have a lot of people watching right now, which is understandable. I told most people this would be starting at 8. Uh, it's actually starting at 7.35. One person's watching. I'm not exactly sure who that is, but thanks. Um, I'm gonna get some more. Oh, zero people watching. That's great. Thanks. Uh, I'm gonna get some techie stuff done now that no one's here. If anyone appears back, I'll keep talking. But since we got nothing yet, we're gonna wait for people to arrive. And um, I might pull up some if we get results starting to come in early for some weird reason. Uh, then we'll do that. But right now, it looks like we got nothing. Oh, uh, I just forgot what I was... Oh, look, we got one person watching. Excelente. Hello there. Um, so, anyway, continuing on what I was saying. Um, we're doing the house analysis right now. There's, uh, this district won by Trump. Most of the Democratic districts that are somewhat competitive were just districts won by Trump uh, in 2016, but voted for a Democrat. Uh, like, Carol Shee Porter in New Hampshire won. Uh, her went district barely went for Trump, and then she won by a margin smaller than that of Trump, but she's a Democrat, and she's retiring after just her first term. So, I mean, that's pretty unusual to have a first-term incumbent just leave the House. And she's not even running for any other office. She's just permanently retiring. She's, like, gone. Uh, polls close in about, uh... 23 minutes in the state of Missouri. So we'll get results then. Uh, unless they closed early. Let me look. Yep, still nothing reporting. Great. That's sarcasm. Because I'd like to start having results come in somewhat earlier. But okay, uh, we can't wish for impossible things, can we? Anyway, uh, at least... I'm probably going to pull up the Senate map now, because I have to show you guys something. Uh, hopefully they didn't change our readings. Alright, great. Oh, yes, they did. They changed. That's, that, uh, that's not, that got messed up. Okay, so, Angus King got moved back to safe. Um, Wisconsin's still likely... Tina Smith got moved up to likely. Uh, she's pretty well liked. John Tester moved back to likely. Florida moved to lean because Rick Scott looks like he's going to run. Um, Bill Nelson's leading in most polling sources. But it's still Rick Scott's a great candidate. I mean, to run that thing. He's pretty popular. He's the governor. I mean, he's in pretty good shape. Missouri got moved from lean uh, Republican, as I said yesterday, back to toss up. Uh, Tennessee is, we changed that to lean Republican due to the polling average. Joe Donnelly, that race is still toss-up. This race is still toss-up. We could m move it to tilt re Democrat. Uh, if, if we didn't say, t if we said lean instead of tilt here, we meant tilt Republican. Uh, I mean, other than that, we could move Indiana to tilt Republican because Joe Donnelly did some pretty stupid stuff. Uh, he voted to keep the government shut down. 
which is basically suicidal for someone in his position. He was always in a lot of trouble before this, but now his election is going to be even harder. Uh, and unless we see uh, some surge in, well, not a surge, the opposite, some, if Trump's approval rating just, like, crashes, like, goes even farther than it is now, he could win by upwards of one point, but other than that, I would be shocked if he got more than 5% and won. I would actually be fairly surprised if he won at this point, so we, I, I, not, I, I wouldn't be surprised, ah, oh, what did I do there, but it would be, it would be not, it would be hard, it's hard to predict who will win there, Joe Donnelly's an incumbent, it's a good year for the Democrats, but he's in a very red state. Uh, he, he's fairly well-liked, but he's not, like, extremely popular. He has about a 53% approval. Last time I checked, uh, that might have changed, but I don't want to go on to that now. It is 7.40. Polls close in just two minutes. Two minutes, not two minutes, 20 minutes. Uh, not two minutes. I mean, I wish, but no, not yet. So, hopefully, we can, um, if results come in, like, directly... After polls close, we can just, you know, get that done. Uh, uh there's going to be a couple poll closing calls. That means they're going to be called right when polls close. Uh, you guys will see how we do all this once polls close, or at least you might get an idea. I'll do a kind of behind-the-scenes thing after this. Um, but other than that... Yeah, so still no results. Um, so I just noticed something about uh, local races in Westchester. It appears there's almost no Republicans running, which is um, makes sense. It's a pretty, excuse me, pretty Democratic um, area, but there's like almost no Republicans running, and there's unaffiliated candidates who get no more than five percent of the vote at a time. There's Democrats who rack up giant margins. And that's kind of the how Westchester goes. That's what Westchester does. They give Democrats giant margins, uh, the only exception being Astorino. When they give Republicans margins, they're typically small, unless it's in Yorktown, uh, which is in the northern part of Westchester. And then I guess some of the Yonkers suburbs are pretty red, too. But still very blue county. It's only getting bluer, actually, to be honest, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, so we're going to be covering a combination of local, statewide, and national special elections in early 2018 before November. And then we could be covering a couple races after that. So what we're probably going to do is we're going to go to this. Then once we're done with that, we're going to go to this presentation. Uh, this is like all the big elections. Once this is over, everything's kind of going to cool down. We'll start focusing on 2019 and then... uh ugh. 2018 special elections. We're probably going to have a few more after Election Day. Um, I don't know what states. There's probably not going to be too many. Uh, and then we'll start doing 2019 special elections. Then we'll have the Louisiana, Kentucky gubernatorial races. I think there's, there may or may not be a, no, I don't think there's any Senate races. You know what? Why don't we look it up now? 2019 election. Yep, okay. Uh, three. Three races. Kentucky, uh, Mississippi, and Louisiana. Louisiana is going to be an interesting one. John Bell Edwards, pretty popular incumbent, but in a very red state. It is a good year for the Democrats. I think he's going to have a pretty, uh, unless the race, he, they get a really good Republican candidate in there. I think he's going to have a fairly easy re-election. Not really easy. He's kind of going to have a sort of, oh, what's his name? I forgot his name. He's a Democrat. Sherrod Brown. He's going to have a Sherrod Brown style election. It's going to be pretty competitive. He's going to have to spend a pretty big amount of money, but he's going to win by a somewhat comfortable margin. Uh, he's not going to, it's not going to be like a, he's not going to pull a Joe Donnelly. Unless he does. Unless he does something dumb like Joe Donnelly does. And then he's and then if he wins, he's not going to win by a lot. But if he uh, just sticks to his conservative values and all that, he's probably going to get reelected. Kentucky, I don't know what's going on there, but 
Mississippi. Uh, I think that's going to be another safe, safe one. Two-term Republican. Oh, okay, so Mississippi could be somewhat competitive. Let's see. So, yep. Uh, general election. Polling! We actually, oh my gosh. Yeah, we have polling, so we'll calculate an average. We actually could open a slide for this, but we're not going to, because I'm too lazy. Um, so it showed, yeah. Okay, yeah, so early ratings. We're going to do some early ratings. Kentucky is rated tilt Republican. Indiana, not Indiana, uh, Louisiana is rated lean Democrat. And then... Was, no, wait, Kentucky? Not Kentucky. Kentucky's rated, um, safe Republican, at least for now. Mississippi is rated, uh, tilt Republican. We might move that to lean. And then Louisiana is lean Democrat. Could be moved to either tilt or even possibly likely. We're not going to move it to safe because it's such a red state, at least now. Uh, that could change if we see population and growth in New Orleans, which we're not really seeing right now, so I'm not going to expect that. Polls close in 15 minutes. Uh, hopefully more people will start joining uh, around 8, because I told people to be here at 8, and so they're going to be here at 8. They're just going to ignore everything else I say. They're going to be here at 8, unless they're not, which would really, really suck, but... I mean, we're going to work with what we have. At least someone is watching the video. So, yeah. Uh, poll closing in 14 minutes now. We're going to start getting set up and ready to begin bringing in results as soon as possible. Um, just going to refresh everything here. Uh, still... Nothing reporting. Uh, we'll start getting you percent percent reportings. Uh, the percent of precincts reporting. Uh, cause I don't know how to do percentage of vote, so I'll do percent of precincts reporting. Uh, there's thirty seven in District thirty nine. Uh, ten in District ninety seven. That's going to be easy to do fractions with. We don't need a calculator for that. Uh, 18 in District 129. And then a total of 44 in uh, District 144. Oh, that's pretty neat. 44 in District 144. So we're going to skip right to... Uh, there's only two races that could even be somewhat competitive. They're all rated safe Republican. Uh, we don't have a very likely rating, which we actually might bring back. Uh, but, actually, except this one. This one's rated likely Republican, just because Jim Skaggs seems like a pretty decent candidate, you know. Uh, but, if, if he loses, then we're gonna, we don't really know too much about these races. I don't live in Missouri. I have relatives there who might be watching this, but I don't live there. I don't really know what politics are like in those areas. Uh, I did my research, but there weren't Democrats running in a lot of these districts, so we don't know what to expect. That's why I'm only going to do poll cl closing calls, likely for two or so of the races. The rest of them, we'll wait till results come in, and then we'll probably do calls. Um, Missouri State House, District 97 is probably going to be a pretty easy call. This one could be somewhat competitive. Uh, Jim Skaggs could even win. Kind of doubt it, though. But we will see. I don't know um, if Jim Skaggs is a really well-liked local figure. Again, I don't live in any of these areas. Uh, I don't think my relatives live in these areas either. So they're probably not going to uh, know who these people are. I mean, they might. Because I don't, I don't know uh, where they live in. Uh, I have relatives in the St. Louis suburbs. But I don't know in uh, where. Actually, no. I think all these districts are pretty rural. So it's not going to affect them. At least not, um, unless, like, their district gets merged or something. But I think these are pretty far away from the St. Louis suburban area. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. 
Uh, so, let's talk about the candidates. I'm not going to go to the poll closing calls because I don't want to spoil too much. Um, Mike Revis, David Linton, don't know much about them. But Jim Skaggs, uh, Chris Dinkins, uh, my impression of her is she's a pretty weak candidate opposed to Jim Skaggs, who's a pretty good one. But this is rural Missouri. Uh, they haven't even had a Democrat on the ballot in the last couple of races. At least I don't think so. Um, oh, wow. Polls close in about 10 minutes. Yeah, exactly 10 minutes now. Polls will be closed. Like I said, Chris Dinkins, not the best candidate. Jim Skaggs, good candidate. This is rural Missouri. I'm going to say for about the fifth time. Uh, so, you know... You know, uh, I mean, rural races can go for Democrats. Uh, like, we saw that race in Wisconsin, the state house race. Maybe it was a state senate race, I don't remember. But the state legislator race in Wisconsin, it was rated safe Republican. Uh, probably could have been a poll closing call if we had done it, but it actually ended up with the Democrat winning it. Uh, we might remove some of these projections. This is why I don't like doing poll closing calls for state uh, wide races, because they can flip around a lot. State politics, a lot of the time, are kind of more local than partisan. They are pretty partisan, but especially in rural areas, there's only about 300,000 people each in a lot of these districts. So, all these rural districts, they're not really, um, what's the word? They're not, uh, the, the elections might not be too partisan. I mean, we could see Jim Skaggs winning. I would be pretty surprised if any of the other people win, especially, um, person opposing Steve Knight. I forgot their name. I don't want to look there because then I'll, I'll ruin everything for you guys. Um, hey guys, this is Savanaj. Are you worried about your portfolio? Don't panic. Oh, jeez. Uh, that, that, sorry, that was my Instagram. It's just, I, I sat on my phone. Anyway, um, polls close very soon. Nine minutes till polls have closed. Let me update, uh, see if results have even started coming in. Uh, we're gonna go district by district until we get something. Still 0% reporting. Alright, that's not a big disappointment. Let me make sure the slides are all ready to go. Uh, 0% reporting, 0% reporting. Great. Uh, here's our special check mark. You didn't see this yesterday. This is my favorite check mark, and I don't want to have to try and fish it off the internet again. So I just created a special slide for it. So me and all the people who are helping me edit this can just find it, copy it, right to the thing in the bob, and then if I delete a bunch of slides, either by accident or on purpose, we still have the check mark. Unless I delete that by accident, in which I can just reverse that. Um So yeah, we're gonna be waiting about eight minutes till polls close. I made a fairly good use of the thirty minutes of time. Uh, I've made better use of time. I remember I had, I started two hour, two to three hours earlier than I should have for Alabama, two to three hours before polls actually ended up closing. Oh, I have to make sure polls do close at 8 o'clock in Missouri. So when do polls... I think I looked at this before. State House. Ah, oh, crap. Not Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, blah blah blah. Missouri, Missouri, Missouri. Uh 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. 7 p.m.? No, that's not right. Uh, that must be central time. Uh, <laughs> so, yep. Uh, what is that? What time zone is that? Is that in Eastern Standard Time? Or Let's go to New York, because we can figure this out. Maine. Close at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hmm. 
Yeah, so the, the yeah, they probably close at eight. Uh, six minutes till polls close. At least I think so. Uh, Missouri polling locations. Let's see here. No, I don't. I don't know that. Okay, so eight o'clock. We were right. At least I think so. Unless they closed an hour ago and just results are taking forever to report. Or we could look up results. Uh, results. District 144. All right, great. Uh, the issue about Ballopedia is it doesn't give us that much actual information. Uh, there's no polling for this. That's not a big surprise. Oh, we have five minutes till polls close. I just spoiled a ton of it by accident. No big deal, but hopefully people will start arriving around 8 o'clock. If not, then people will hopefully watch the whole thing after. Um... Yeah, but other than that, polls are about to close four minutes. Just four minutes till polls have closed in the state of Missouri. Uh, hopefully we can start getting results out soon. Uh, I'm debating whether or not to play MSNBC music during the whole thing. Uh, if anyone who's watching this thinks yes or no. Then we can figure that out. But polls close in four minutes now. Um, so, yep. Oh, crud. It's three minutes. Three minutes till polls have closed in the state of Missouri uh, for the special elections. I'm just getting my iPad out so I can monitor results. Mm. Oh, they haven't updated. Let's let's look on the computer. Uh, e n l dot s o s dot Missouri dot gov. Great. Uh. Okay. Oh, still nothing. They'll probably update it sometime later. Uh, when polls actually close. Two minutes till polls have closed. Two minutes till polls have closed. So. We're going to have um, results coming in, hopefully pretty quickly. All local races uh, shouldn't take too long to count all the votes. We have about 30 minutes to report as much as possible. We're probably going to call all four of the races within those 30 minutes. And polls are coming up soon. Well, they're going to be closing. We're going to get results coming up soon. Sorry. Uh... Yeah, so, hopefully, for the Democrats, not hopefully, sorry, I'm, I, I'm actually a Republican, just I'm used to saying hopefully, because I was a long-time Democrat. Um, if the Democrats do well, they can nab one, maybe two of these seats, actually maybe three, if they get really lucky, but let's be all realistic here, I think there are going to be Republican holds. Um... District 144 could be the lone exception. 
That one's not a toss-up. It's likely Republican, but still. I mean, we're still expecting that one to go Republican. I don't know by how much. It would be pretty ironic if one of the districts that were poll close and close for us ended up being pretty close, and all the districts we rated as somewhat competitive, or thought would be somewhat competitive, uh, were all really uncompetitive. And, like, the one party got 80% or more or something. Pretty crazy like that. Uh, well, our viewers has going... It's been holding steady at one. Uh, not what I want to see, but better than zero, I guess. We have 30 minutes and 40 seconds. Oh, polls have just closed, so we're going to go into this. Poll closings in the state of Missouri. Uh, Missouri State House District 39, Peggy McGow is the projected winner with 0% reporting. Peggy McGow is the projected winner. Um... Missouri State House, <laughs> District 97, too early to call, Mike Revis and David Linton, both with 0%, 0% reporting. Jeff Knight is projected winner in District 129 of the Missouri State House special election. Jeff Knight is now the projected winner. And State House, District 144, too early to call, 0% reporting. Uh, we're going to try and get, no results have come out yet. Uh, we're going to try and start getting results for these races. Uh, still 0% reporting, but we're gonna, I'm still, I'm busy trying to figure out what's going on here. Uh, hopefully results will begin to start coming in soon. If not, I hope I didn't get the poll closing times wrong. Cause that would be extremely irritating. Uh, I think they might have updated them. Because it's 7.01 there, but it's 8.01 now. So I think they might be updating them this moment. I'm reloading the page. Okay. Still no, uh, nothing reporting. Yet. I can't wait till we start getting results. I'm especially excited to see how District 144 turns out. Uh, nothing reporting still. Uh, state races, so things like this are going to take forever. Unless they don't. Uh, no spike in people watching this. Bit disappointing. Uh, but not entirely unexpected. Uh, mm hmm This is very irritating. Today is the 6th, right? What day is it? Yep, it's February 6th. So, results should be coming in, but they're not. Is somewhat irritating. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but it is starting to get on me. Let's go back to the website on the computer so you guys can see if it's all start to come in. Uh, you know, that was right above. Yep, nothing reporting as you all can see here. Did they just update it? I really do hope so. Because I am bored out of my mind. No, it says they did something, but they didn't. Which is quite irritating. Uh, they still haven't done anything yet. Oh, wait. Did they do something here? Nope. Okay. Uh... We stand by our projections, blah, 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 blah. Uh, once we get a taste of results, we're going to be focusing on District uh, 144 and District 97. If we start getting a good turnout for Mr. Linton, uh, we're going to call the race for him. 
probably pretty soon actually. Uh, once results start coming in again. Uh. Okay. Still zero percent reporting. I'm worried that like nothing's gonna even start reporting till like thirty minutes later. So, um, I'm debating on whether just to call the race for Linton right now, because I'm I'm pretty sh I'm reasonably sure he's going to win. Uh huh. Bum bum bum. Still zero percent reporting. Oh, this is a. Oh, okay, I get it. So they actually haven't updated anything, literally at all. Uh, if results take like ten minutes to come in, that's gonna bother me a lot. But. Not the end of the world. Uh, polls did basically just close. And these local people aren't in this huge rush to obtain voter information like I am. So, kind of makes sense. Did I just see numbers? Did I just see something other than the endless sea of zeros? Nope, I didn't. Okay, that's great. Um... We may or may not have a call coming up, depending on how quickly results come in and what they look like. So, right now, two Republican holds as we've projected. The other two races are too early to call. So, two races too early to call, two projected for the Republicans. Uh, Peggy McGow's projected winner in District 39. And Jeff Knight is the predicted winner in District 129. So, two Republican holds, no Democratic gains, no Republican gains for obvious reasons, because they're all Republican seats. It is currently 8.06 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Huh. Maybe do polls close in the morning or something? I don't know. This is taking uncomfortably long. Just gonna keep refreshing until something comes up. Uh, if this takes more than seven minutes, I'm gonna get really annoyed. Oh, uh, this is unbearably annoying. Uh, once we start getting results, I will update them, and then we could have a projection the second that results start coming in uh, in District 97. District 144 might take a little while. Probably not, but it could. Uh, let's see if any results have even began to come in. No, nope, still not. Uh, if I, I really hope we don't sit here for 30 minutes. And then wait for stuff to come in. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna redo this. No, nothing. Nothing. Hmm, nothing. Nothing. Okay, still nothing for all the seats. Um, but we still stand by our projections. Uh. So, I mean, yeah. You want, it might be cool if we were to add a yellow ba- Oh, no, that looks very ugly. That's like unbelievably ugly. Oh, that's pretty ugly, too. That's not white. Why'd I do this? I'm such an idiot. Alright, great. Now it doesn't look as messed up. I'm still trying desperately 
to get some sort of result. I'm trying to look for another source. Mm. Nope. Uh, let us... Yeah, I'm gonna try another source. Uh, House Elections 2018 Oh, Uh, Ballotpedia is not helping me out. Still 0% reporting in every last one of these elections. It is now 10 minutes in. They should be reporting, but they're not. Uh, if we really do sit here for like 30 minutes, I'm going to be very angry. Actually, you know what? Uh, I think I may have a projection coming up. Give us a moment. We're going to go up to here. Okay. And then we're going to hide that. Uh, I'm trying to paste my little thing on the bob. It's not working. Okay, great. Uh, huh. I don't know what's going on there. Okay, there we are. Uh, that got terribly messed up. Uh, this thing is new. This process is literally brand new. So, I'm sorry if it doesn't look good. Uh, this is essentially a test of all of this. Mike Revis, the projected winner now. Mike, uh, not Mike Revis. David Linton, sorry, is the projected winner. Uh, District 97, another Republican hold. David Linton is the projected winner. We have reviewed, reviewed what we have seen of the results. Oh, okay, um, we have results reporting now. We have results reporting. Uh, nothing coming in from most of these races. Uh, this is a race we've already called. We're going to give you results. Uh, Jeff Knight, now, with 58 point. 33.3 percent. Gonna expand that text box, make it nice and big so we can actually fit the number. And then Rana Ford with about 41.667 percent, 41.667 percent of the vote. Rana Ford is a Democrat. I'm not sure why it doesn't say so there, but. Now it does. Great. Um, Rana Ford is losing right now by about 17 points. Uh, she's performing fairly well. She's not getting completely wiped off the map quite yet. Uh, 17 points is a pretty bad place to be at. 
to be completely honest with you. But, I mean, yeah. We only have results reporting. Uh, what is your prediction and why? Right now, I'm saying that Peggy McGow, she's the projected winner. The results going on right now. The election's going on right now. Uh, with zero percent reporting. This I have to do some math. Uh, David Linton is the projected winner. Right now, zero percent reporting. Uh, it's not zero percent reporting in this race, but I am yet to do the math. One out of eighteen is five percent. Okay, great. No. No, 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 that's not right. Is it? Um, think so. Yeah, okay. 5% reporting. Currently. Your opinion of the candidates. Uh, I don't really know any of the candidates. Except I know Ronna Ford's a pretty bad candidate. I'm surprised she's doing as well as she is. Chris Dinkins is a pretty bad candidate. And Jim Skaggs is a pretty good candidate. I also think Mike Revis is a pretty good candidate, too. Uh, that's why we might be removing our projection if results are showing the races being close. Total votes, only 93 votes. And it's 5% of precincts reporting. Not 5% of vote. Because I don't know how to calculate the vote percentage. Because uh, I don't know enough of the figures. All of that. Why good or bad? Because uh, some of them are pretty weak. And they're not really good with connecting with the rural voters. Uh, Peggy McGow is actually the mother of the previous representative, so I think she's doing, she's probably going to do fine. Uh, Mike Revis and David Linton both connect. Mike Revis is better at it. Jeff Knight, uh, he is a pretty decent candidate. He seems like a decent guy, too. He's able to connect with the really rural voters. Ronna Ford is not. Uh, Chris Dinkins is sort of able to, but not really. Jim Skaggs definitely is. He's a government official. He's qualified. Uh, he is probably gonna. He's the only candidate who has a chance of making his race close, other than the Linton race, which could get within ten percentage points of a Democrat winning. Okay. Uh, still zero percent reporting in almost all the races. The one exception is District One Hundred and Twenty Nine. Jeff Knight, uh, predict win over Ronna Ford. He's currently leading her by about 17 percentage points. Uh, results are taking forever to come in. So, uh, we're ending this at 8.30. Uh, I may or may not do a follow-up tomorrow. Uh, this is taking much longer than I would have hoped. I actually thought District 39 would be reporting first, but I was completely wrong with that. With my luck, it's going to be the last one reporting. Uh, Jeff Knight is still the projected winner. Uh, all but one. Interesting. How do you form your opinions of the candidates? Uh, I see how well they connect. I see their issues, what their issues are. Ronna Ford is the whole Ozarky and values thing. No one really cares about that, to be honest. And she's, um, she's not really conservative either. So, yeah, it's kind of like one or the other. She's not really preaching anything and poor and other than, like, this education stuff, which people back out there don't really care about. What they care about is really, they care about that, but they care about the economy more. Jeff Knight, I think, is doing better than that. Jeff Knight's gotten more media attention and all that good stuff. So, so 
to only one race reporting, Jeff Knight leading run at Ford with 5% of precincts reporting by roughly, it's not exactly 5%, I rounded it, uh, 7 percentage points. You know what? I'm not going to, I don't know if I want to, next time I'm not going to go into all the decimals, that's kind of a pain, but right now, Lana Ford is getting, basically, uh, she's getting, she's getting locked on the floor with, she's getting really beat up, I mean, she's losing by 17 points, not terrible in a district like this, uh, if we pull up the history, there hasn't really been any Democrats in the first place running, she wasn't a really bad candidate, she was an okay candidate, she wasn't like, um, Chris Dinkins, who I think is a pretty bad candidate, that's why this race could be competitive, she was a decent candidate, uh, she was able to get the somewhat decent margin for the area, but she's still not going to win. Uh, that's our projection. We're going to stand by our projection unless she ends up winning, which I would be simply shocked and probably like go into vegetable state if that were to happen. But not going to happen, at least not yet. Uh, no more votes reporting. N only 96 total votes have come in. Keep that in mind. Uh, one of 18 precincts have reported in District 129. Uh, we'll move our focus to a different district once we get results there. Uh, what I'd like to do is get some of the more competitive districts coming in, but we have about 10 minutes, so uh, I'm not expecting to get too much done here. Uh, we might not even call this race, probably. We might. We might not. Uh, I'm going to do some stuff on Chris Dinkins. Do some more candidate evaluation. And then we might do a call. We could see a call. Oh, yeah, she's pretty conservative. She's all kind of right to life. Hmm. Okay. Well, we might have a prediction. Uh, at 825, if results don't come in, we may or may not make a call. Um, because Chris Dinkins isn't a terrible candidate. Uh, she's pretty bad. She's not, like, a great candidate from what I've seen of her. Uh, she's going to throw off a lot of the woman voters. She's very anti-abortion, even though she is a woman. Uh, she's going to throw off a lot of the woman voters. It is currently 8.22. We could have a call coming up in three minutes if this takes way too long. Still 0% reporting in most of our races. Uh, I'm debating on whether or not to call District 144. Probably not. Uh, we rated this likely Republican. That was definitely under rate. Uh, it should have been safe. Because, I mean, Mike, uh, Jim Skaggs is a good candidate. But I think the district's too conservative to flip. District 144 is extremely conservative. If I can pull up the history. Um, worry. State. House District 144. Okay. 2016, there was even no election. Okay, Paul Fitzwater got 65% of the vote in 2012, which is a pretty good Democratic year. Uh... And I don't think it really existed before that. Uh, there was a primary in 2014, but no Democrat.
Hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. We have uh results coming out. Oh wow, we are withdrawing our projection right now. I'm just gonna do this on my computer. Uh, and we are moving it immediately right back to too close to call. Uh, calling this race so early was definitely a mistake, and you'll see why in a moment. Mike Revis with 81% of the vote. 81.25% to... I'm going to drag out that text box. David Linton's just 18.75%. So this race is probably going to be the most competitive, uh, the way things are going now. Um, we removed our projection. Too close to call. This district is. And with that, we're probably going to take our projection off of uh, Peggy McGill's district. If Mike Ravis can do it, so can Perkinson. So... We're going to remove our projection from there, too, moving it back to too early to call. Uh, yeah, just to be safe. I mean, if Miguel is showing signs of strength, then we will call the race for her. If not... Then, won't. Eight twenty six. We have four minutes. All right. So things are not going as expected. Uh, we could see a big surprise here. But we're going to move on down to this race. This is our only projection we are standing by. Jeff Knight beating Rana Ford. Uh... 0% reporting in this race, 0% reporting here. Oh, we haven't calculated the percentage reporting. That's probably a good idea. Uh, z still 0 out of 10 reporting. Only 16 votes have come in so far. Good system. Uh, 13 for Revis, 3 for Linton. So we're moving it from too early to call, from too close to call, sorry, to too early. We didn't do. A, we did a. We rushed our analysis there. Um. Yeah. So we're new to the all this state politics sort of stuff. So we're still trying to figure out what we're doing around here. Um. Again, we're still standing by our projection. In District 129, uh, no new votes have come in yet. And it is 8.28. We have two minutes until we end this video. Uh, we are going to do a follow-up tomorrow because uh, we only have one projection right now. Uh, that's Mr. Knight beating uh, Ms. Ford. We may reinstate our projection here, Missouri State House District 35. Uh, Perkinson's a pretty terrible candidate, too. I mean, he's really liberal. He's in a pretty red district. He's going to have some difficulty winning. 
Also, we'll probably do better research for the next state races. I think that's why we had our all of our call mess ups. Uh, if it could um give the Democrats a couple more seats in the state house, other than that, not really much at all of an effect. Uh, it also could signify Democrats are starting to do better in the more rural districts. And it could also signify uh, the Democrat Party is starting to do better in the state of Missouri. Especially if um, Revis wins. Perkinson's not going to win. Probably. Uh, we might... Actually, probably not. We don't have a projection yet. So, uh, right now, all eyes are on these two races. And we are going to have another projection coming out soon. We're going to reinstate one of our old ones. Uh, I'm not going to tell you which one. Okay, uh, great. Well, actually, no, not yet. Great. Uh, hold on just for one second. Alright, we're about to get off, but we have one last projection. Uh, Peggy McGow is now the projected winner in the state of Missouri. House District 39. Uh, we're about to get off now, because... I'm going to bed. I'm tired. I don't want to track this all night. Uh, it's going to be pretty boring. Waiting for results to come in. Because it's taking them forever to get, like... It took them ages to report 16 votes. So we're going to be signing off. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'll do a follow-up video tomorrow. And I'll see you then. Alright, thanks for watching, guys. Good night.